Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. On this week's episode, we bring you Zaxara the Exemplary out of Commander 2020. Zaxara is 1, a black, a green, and a blue for a legendary creature, Nightmare Hydra. It has Death Touch. You can tap it to add 2 mana of any one color to your mana pool. Whenever you cast a spell with X in its mana cost, create a 0, 0 green Hydra creature token, then put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Because Zaxara makes Hydras whenever we play X spells, we are going to lean heavily into that theme. Zaxara is great because it's a mana dork as well as giving you that powerful ability so it plays well with x spells because you can use xara's mana in the x spell as well and we have a lot of ways of taking advantage of x spells in this deck because it's making hydras we did lean heavily into a counters theme so there's a lot of ways of taking advantage of those plus one plus one counters that are going to be put onto those hydras and ways of doubling those counters and so on and so forth in this deck because hydras have x in their mana cost as well we did lean heavily on a Hydra theme for this deck. There are quite a few Hydras in this deck and other ways of taking advantages of having Hydras on the battlefield. We'll go over a couple of win cons in this deck. There are a couple of two card combos with Zaxara since it's a mana dork. There are a couple of enchantments that will allow you to untap Zaxara and make infinite mana if you're able to get those enchantments on Zaxara or a couple of the other mana dorks that we put into this deck. And at the very end of the video, we'll go over some of the upgrades that you can put into this deck to make it a little bit higher on the power level. Some cards that are inherently more powerful than some of the ones that we put into this deck. Next up, let's quickly go over some of the stats in the deck. And let me know down in the comments below if you like this section in the deck tech. I thought it was a good idea. That way you could see some of the different themes in the deck and how much ramp and card draw that we have and so on and so forth. So let me know. So for ramp, we have 13 spells in the deck that allow us to ramp. Most of those are coming from mana dorks. I felt like mana dorks was a better way to go with this deck since you can lean into Zaxara's ability. And you can get those mana dorks down a little bit quicker or two you can get those down on turn one and two and instead of some of the other ramp cost two or three mana you can get zaxara down quicker there are 10 card draw spells in this deck and there are some very powerful ones that allow you to draw cards whenever you play a creature spell so those are going to draw you a lot of cards if they're on the battlefield more so than something like a spell that draws you a card when you play it and that's it we only have one board wipe in this deck leaning heavily on creatures we don't want too many board wipes in the deck we do have an x spell that has a board wipe on it that is a targeted board wipe works well with this deck we have 13 pieces of interaction in removal and counter spells in this deck and then we have 38 x spells which is a ton of x spells so you're going to be able to play into the x matters theme really easily with this deck and of those x spells 16 of which are hydras so we're going to have a ton of hydras in this deck it's going to be kind of like a hydra tribal deck with an x spells matter theme on it all right, guys, so we are going to give this deck away. It's been a while since we've done a contest, and I thought this is a great opportunity. All you have to do to enter this contest is be a subscriber. So if you're not a subscriber already, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel, like this video, and then put a comment in the comment box. I'll reach out to whoever wins after 630 and set up shipping for the deck, and it will include the 100 cards that you see in the video and on the deck list in the show notes below. It will also include a deck box and Ultra Pro Eclipse sleeves already sleeved up, and ready to play with your friends. Check out the show notes down below for all the rules of the contest and good luck in the contest, everybody. All prices in this video are powered by TCG Player. If you guys are gonna be shopping on TCG Player, it would mean the world to me if you guys would use my affiliate link, which I'll put up on the screen right now, and it will also be in the show notes down below. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help the channel out quite a bit. All right, so let's get into the deck tech, and we're gonna start off by going over some of the ramp that we include in this deck, and we're gonna start off with the mana dorks that we have here. So first up we have Llanowar Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Elves of the Deep Shadow. They all cost one mana and they all add one green or one black to your mana pool. Then we have Incubation Druid and Gyre Sage. They both cost two mana. Incubation Druid lets you add one mana to your mana pool. And if it has a plus one plus one counter on it, you can add three mana to your mana pool and it has a DAP three on it. Gyre Sage has evolved. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, you can put a plus one plus one counter on it. You could tap to add a green to your mana pool for each of the plus one plus one counters on it. Now, both of these are going to work out with the infinite combo that we have in this deck, which I'll go over later in the video. So you can use this with either of these creatures as well. Incubation Druid is a special one in this deck because it will also work with the infinite combo that Zaxara has in this deck, which I'll go over later in the video. As long as it has a plus one plus one counter on it, you'll be able to generate infinite mana with the enchantment that we have in this deck. 
Next up, we have a couple of spells that are going to let us get additional lands on the battlefield. Rampant Growth and Far Seek will both search your library for a land, put it onto the battlefield. Cultivate lets you search for a land, put it on the battlefield, and also one in your hand as well. Kodama's Reach is similar to Cultivate. Search for two basics, reveal one, put onto the battlefield, tap, the other goes into your hand. And then Animus Awakening is an X spell. It lets you reveal the top X cards of your library and put all land cards from among them onto the battlefield, tapped, the rest onto the bottom. And if there's two or more instants or sorceries in your graveyard, you can untap those lands as well. Then we have our mana rocks. We've got Soul Ring, Simic Signet, and Talisman of Curiosity. These are all really cheap artifacts that are going to allow you to generate mana very quickly and early in the game so that we can potentially get Zexara down a turn or two earlier. Next up, let's go over the interaction that we have in this deck. So first up, we'll go over the counter spells that we have in here. So first up, we have Counterspell, Negate, and Arcane Denial. These are highly efficient two mana cost counter spells that I put in almost every single blue deck. Arcane Denial does give you a little bit of a downside by your opponents drawing two cards, but you do get to draw one card off of it as well. Then we have some counter spells that have X in the casting cost. So these are less powerful than the ones I just went over, but they do come attached with a Hydra if you have Zexar on the battlefield. So it doesn't make them a little bit better so we have condescend and logic knot they both have x in their casting cost counter target spell unless controller pays x condescend gives you a scry on it and then logic knot you can delve which is nice Thassa's intervention is similar except it's a modal spell look at the top x cards of your library put two of them into your hand the rest on the bottom of your library it does allow you to draw a couple of cards if you need it in that situation and then you can also counter target spell unless it's controller pays twice x next up we have some ways of dealing with permanence so we've got putrefy destroys an artifact or a creature Reclamation Sage, when it enters the battlefield, destroys an artifact or enchantment. And then Nature Claim gets rid of an artifact or enchantment, its controller gains or life. Then we have Beast Within, destroy a permanent, and then its controller puts a 3 3 green beast creature token onto the battlefield. Erebos's intervention is an X spell. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. You can gain X life or exile up to twice X target cards from graveyards. Curse of the Swine is that X spell that is a pseudo board wipe that I was talking about earlier in the video. Exile X target creatures for each creature X sell this way its controller puts a 2-2 green boar creature token onto the battlefield next up let's go over some of the card draw that we have in this deck and like i said at the beginning of the video a lot of this is going to be based on when creatures enter the battlefield we're going to draw some cards this is going to draw you a lot more cards than a spell because it's going to sit on the battlefield and draw you a ton of cards over the course of the game whenever you play creatures or whenever zaxara is making creatures so first up we have kiora behemoth beckoner whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control draw a card so this is nice because it will work off of zaxara as well if you pay an x spell that costs more than four you'll be able to draw a card off kiora an elemental bond does the same thing except it's power three or greater and then beast whispers whenever you cast a creature spell you can draw a card this will not work off of zaxara's ability zendikar resurgent lets you double your mana and then also whenever you cast a creature spell you draw a card so it's a very powerful card in this deck especially with all the x spells that we have in here return of the wild speakers are a very great card out of throne of El Drain. It's an instant. You can draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. And that's great because this is a Hydra deck. And then non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. So this will also pump up your Hydras if you need to close out the game with this card. Gadwick the Wizard is an X mana cost legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, you can draw X cards. And whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target non-land permanent in opponent controls. This will act like a stroke of genius on a creature. It also gives you that powerful ability to tap non-land permanent your opponent's control whenever you play a blue spell which is nice on the card as well then we have a couple other of stroke of genius types effects so we have pull from tomorrow stroke of genius itself and then finale of revelation these are all x spells that are going to allow you to draw x cards and then pull from tomorrow has the downside of you having to discard a card and finale of revelation if you have x 10 or more you can actually untap five lands and have no maximum hand size so these are all really powerful in the deck to draw you a lot of cards and then last but not least we have blue sun zenith it does the same thing as stroke of genius except it lets you shuffle it into your library after it resolves which is great next up we're going to talk about a couple of tutors in this deck that are going to help us find our infinite combo and our win con so first up we have diabolic tutor you can search your library 
library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. And then Drift of Phantasms is a creature with Defender, which we don't really care about, but it does have Transmute for one blue blue. So you can discard this card, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. The great thing about this card in this deck is it does have the converted mana cost of the two cards that are going to allow us to infinitely generate mana. So this is a very powerful, cheap tutor in this deck. So next up, we're going to talk about all the Hydras that we have in this deck. All these Hydras have X in their mana cost, and they're going to enter the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. I'm going to skip through all of that when I explain these cards. I'm just going to talk about the abilities that they have on them. So Mist Cutter Hydra has got protection from blue and can't be countered. So this is really good against blue decks. Feral Hydra, you can pay three and put a plus one plus one counter on it. Any player may activate that ability. So you get some politicking involved in that one, which is kind of cool. Protean Hydra, if damage would be dealt to it, you remove plus one plus one counters from it and whenever a plus one plus one counters removed you put two plus one plus one counters on on the beginning of the next end step so this one's going to get huge really quickly unless your opponent has a way of killing it stone coil serpent it has reach trample and protection from multicolored it is not a hydra but it is a snake so felt like it fit in in this deck and it's good because of the x in the cost hungering hydra can't be blocked by more than one creature and whenever it's dealt damage put that many plus one plus one counters on it steelbane hydra is a newer one out of throne of eldraine it has two and a green remove a plus one plus one counter from it destroy target artifact or enchantment so this is a very powerful one in the deck to help you get rid of problematic permanents your opponents may have Hooded Hydra is one of my favorite Hydra creatures. It has Morph for three green green, and whenever it dies, create a one one green snake creature token for each plus one plus one counter on it. If it's turned face up, you get to put five plus one plus one counters on it as well. One thing to note with this is if you do Morph it, you're not going to get that Hydra off of Zaxara. So in this instance, it's probably better to pay it for its actual mana cost. Genesis Hydra, whenever you cast it, you get to reveal the top X cards of your library and put a non-land permanent card with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Vastwood Hydra, whenever it dies, you may distribute a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the number of counters on it among any number of creatures you control. So this is nice. You're going to get all those counters back whenever it dies. Then we have Voracious Hydra, another new one out of M20. When it enters the battlefield, you can double the number of plus one plus one counters on it, or it fights target creature you don't control. Hydra Broodmaster does not have X in its mana cost. It has Monstrosity X, so you can pay XX green into it. If it isn't monstrous, put X plus one plus one counters on it, and it becomes monstrous. And whenever this one does become monstrous, you can put XXX green Hydra creature tokens onto the battlefield. It's a very powerful card, even though it doesn't have X in the mana cost and then we have a legendary creature hydra and i made a deck tech off of this when this came out in m20 it's gargos vicious watcher this, this is the original hydra lord and i think this has been taken over by zaxara because zaxara is more powerful in my opinion it has vigilance and hydra spells you cast cost four less to cast whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell gargos vicious watcher fights up to one target creature you don't control Next up, let's go over some of the X spells that we have in this deck that don't really fit into any of the other categories. So first up, we have Altered Ego. It can't be countered, and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature, except it has X additional plus one plus one counters on it. Entrancing Melody allows us to gain control of target creature with converted mana cost X, and then Mass Manipulation, gain control of X target creatures and or Planeswalkers. These are really nice ways of stealing your opponent's creatures or making copies of them, and it is really powerful. So if your opponents are playing at a higher power level, you can steal some of their higher power level creatures and permanents with these cards. Next up, we have Nissa, Steward of the Elements. It comes in the pre-con deck, and it's a Planeswalker that has X in its mana cost. You can zero, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card or a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of loyalty counters on Nissa, you may put that card onto the battlefield. And you can minus six, untap up to two target lands you control. They become five, five elemental creatures with flying and haste until end of turn. One thing to note with Nissa is do not put a high a creature onto the battlefield with Nissa that will enter with zero counters on it and will just die immediately. So make sure you're not choosing one of those Hydras that are in the deck when you do look with Nissa. Wildest Dreams is another X spell. Return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand and then exile it. This is like Eternal Witness, except that you can do it for X. And it's very powerful in this deck because we do have a lot of X spells. 
Profane Command is another X spell. Choose two. Target player loses X life. Return target creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn and up to X target creatures gain fear until end of turn. I actually like that last ability a lot because Hydras don't have any type of evasion and they don't have trample typically. You can give all of your Hydras fear and if your opponents don't have black or artifact creatures, you will be able to get in for a lot of damage that way. Next up, let's talk about some of the utility cards that we have in this deck that are going to help us with our strategies. So first up, we have a couple of cards that work well with plus one, plus one counters. So we've got Winding Constrictor and Corpse Jack Menace. Counters are placed on an artifact or creature you control. That many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. And Corpse Jack Menace is a little bit better. It puts twice that many plus one, plus one counters on. So if you pay X on a Hydra for five, it's going to enter with 10 plus one, plus one counters. With Winding Constrictor, it would enter with six plus one plus one counters. I talked earlier in the video about Hydras don't have any evasion and Herald of the Secret Streams is going to help you with that because creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them can't be blocked. All of our Hydras are going to have plus one plus one counters on them. Herald of the Secret Streams says give all of your Hydras unblockable and that's important because Hydras don't have trample. They don't have any other type of evasion so you need ways of giving them evasion otherwise they can be chump blocked by one one tokens or any other small creature and you definitely don't want that when you're trying to win the game. Another way of doing that is with Ronus's Monument. It's a legendary artifact. Green creature spells you cast cost one less to cast, so that works out really well with Hydras. It's going to give you one extra counter on all of your Hydra spells. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature you control gains plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turns. This is a way of giving your creatures trample whenever you play a creature spell. Unbound Flourishing is the absolute best card in this deck, other than Freed from the Real because you get that infinite combo, but it's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a permanent spell with a mana cost that contains X, double the value of X. That's insane. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell or activate an ability, if that spell's mana cost or that ability's activation cost contains X, copy that spell or ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Yeah, this is an extremely powerful card. It was meant for this deck. It went up in price quite a bit. I remember when you can get these for around three bucks when Modern Horizon came out, when there was a ton of supply on this card. Now it's gone up to about $15 because of this commander. Maybe wait a little bit on this one. If you don't have one already, it should go down now that the commander's been out for a little bit, but it's a very powerful card. It's pretty much needed in this deck, in my opinion. Wilderness Reclamation is another great card in this deck. It's an enchantment at the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. This is going to allow you to tap out on your turn and put all your mana into your X spells. And then at the end of your turn, you get to untap all your lands, which is great. So you can hold up your counter spells and other interaction that you have. Next up, let's talk about some of the win cons that we have in this deck. Now, the first win con we have is Villainous Wealth. It's an X spell. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of his or her library. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana costs. If you have generated infinite mana, which I will go over in the next slide here, you can play this and exile an opponent's library and put all of those non-land cards onto the battlefield. And then hopefully you should be able to win the game from that point. Simic Ascendancy works well with plus one, plus one counter. So it's an enchantment and you can pay one a green and a blue to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control that's not the most powerful part of this card but whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control put that many growth counters on simic ascendancy at the beginning of your upkeep if simic ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it you win the game so it's going to be very easy with this card on the battlefield to get 20 or more growth counters on it because of how many plus one plus one counters we're putting onto our creatures you can win the game fairly easily with this card so next up let's talk about how we're going to generate that infinite mana. So there's a card, it's called Freed from the Real. It's two and a blue for an enchant creature that you can pay a blue and tap enchanted creature or pay a blue and untap enchanted creature. Since XR makes two mana of any color whenever you tap it, you if you put Freed from the Real on Zaxara, you can generate two blue mana and then untap Zaxara and then you'll have one blue left over and you can continue to do this infinitely and then once you have infinite blue mana you can filter in your other two colors and get infinite of each color if that makes sense. So Incubation Druid works for this as well. And once you have infinite mana another win con that you have in this deck that will win the game for you right on the spot is Exsanguinate. It's a sorcery each opponent loses X life you gain life equal to the life lost this way. In addition to this card you do have Stroke of 
Genius, Blue Sun Zenith, Pull from Tomorrow, those type of cards too. If you have one of those with Free from the Real, you can draw your deck and then you can stroke a genius, your opponent, Blue Sun Zenith, draw their libraries out as well. That's another way of winning the game that I didn't put here in this section, but I just wanted to talk about it since those are another way of winning the game. And there's another Freed from the Real type effect that I'll go over in the upgrades video that if you have it, you should definitely put into this deck. Unfortunately, it's not budget anymore. It used to be, but ever since Zaxara was spoiled, both Freed from the Real and the other card went up in price quite a bit. All right, so let's go over the last part of this video. I did want to talk about a few cards that you can add to this deck to make it a little bit more powerful. You can take out some of the less powerful cards in your deck. If you have these cards, now these are non-budget, so they are going to be a little bit more expensive to put into here, but they are worth it. Let's just say you have them in your collection already, or you have some cards sitting in your binder that are collecting dust. You can trade those in and add these cards to your deck to make it a little bit more powerful if you like it. So first up, I'm going to talk about a couple of ways of doubling tokens or counters. So first up, we have Parallel Lives. It's three and a green for an enchantment. If an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under control, it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. So this is a $22 card, which isn't that much. I remember when this card used to be a little bit more than that. So you're actually in a pretty good time of getting this. But this works really well with Zaxara. Whenever you cast an X spell, you're going to put two two XX Hydras onto the battlefield, which is pretty insane and definitely worth putting into this deck. Similar to Parallel Lives, but much more powerful than Parallel Lives is Doubling Season. So Doubling Season has the same effect as Parallel Lives plus an additional side to it. So the additional part is if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many counters on that permanent instead. So this is a Parallel Lives and Corpse Jack Menace combine into one card. Extremely powerful, extremely expensive. So it's about $60 right now. The really cool thing about this though, is this is going to come out in double masters in, I think it's August. So if you can hang on for a little bit, play your Zaxara deck, see how you like it. When double masters comes out, this will probably go to 30 or 40 bucks is my thought. When it did get reprinted in battle bond, it went in half. So it went from 60 to about 30, 40 bucks. And then it went back up to 60 again. So you will have a window where this will be cheaper in double masters. And then you should definitely buy that card if you don't have it yet because it's extremely powerful in a lot of different decks. It's great in Planeswalker decks or any plus one, plus one counter strategy decks or tokens as well. The other way of making infinite mana in this deck is Pemmin's Aura. This was a card that was very cheap before. This deck was spoiled. It was probably like five bucks and it shot up to 20. The last time this card was printed was in Scourge. So it's been quite some time since this has come out. It's exactly like Freed from the Real. So cost three mana as well and you can untap enchanted creature that's the only thing we really care about but it does give you some other flexibility you can have your creature gain flying or it can't be target of spells or abilities so it is better than freed from the real in that situation because you can actually give it protection when your opponent goes to remove it if you have a blue mana up seedborn muse is another extremely powerful card in this deck and it's not that expensive it was just reprinted in commander 19 and then before that in battle bond so this was a card that was up there in the 30 40 dollars range got reprinted in battle bond went to about seven bucks didn't get reprinted until commander 19 went back up to about 20 and then dropped back down when it got reprinted again so if you have your commander decks from last year you got the whole set you have this card in your collection so definitely put it in this deck if you have it it's going to allow you to untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap steps it's going to allow you to maximize your mana and play spells in your opponent's turns then we have the Great Henge. It's another pricey one out of Throne of Eldraine. It costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. This is going to be easy to cast because you're going to have a lot of creatures with high power on the battlefield. You can tap to add two green to your mana pool and you gain two life. And the most important part is whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. So this is going to get, draw you a ton of cards whenever you're playing your creatures and also pump them up as well. Now this card has gone up in price quite a bit. So it was about $13. Now it's up to $26 and it's going to keep going up. It's a very powerful card in Commander. So if you don't have one, I say don't wait, get one now. 
Next up, we have two other ways of winning the game if we have infinite mana or a lot of mana. So if the first one is Walking Ballista, it's XX for an artifact creature, enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. You can pay four to put a plus one plus one counter on it. And the most important part, remove a plus one plus one counter from Walking Ballista. It deals one damage to target creature or player. This is very powerful in any deck where you can make infinite mana because you can just kill all your opponents right away. And then the last card that we have is one that was just recently reprinted in Mystery Booster. So the price has gone down. Down slightly. It's Torment of Hailfire. It's X black black for sorcery. Repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So this is nine bucks. It's one of the meanest cards that you can play in Commander. I've lost this card too many times to count. It's extremely powerful and it's a really easy way of ending the game if you have infinite mana. And if you don't, you're going to set your opponents back extremely far if you have a lot of mana and you cast this spell. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. Let me know if there's any other upgrades or cards that I missed in this deck. See you guys next time.